grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on using tree diagrams. These diagrams show all possible outcomes of an experiment and can be used to calculate the probability of independent and dependent events. The first example we will look at uses independent events. Remember, with independent events, the probability of the second event is not influenced by the probability or the occurrence of the first event. Also remember that for independent events A and B, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. In the first example, we look at the events of tossing two coins. The outcome on the first coin has no influence on the second coin. This shows that the two events are independent. Let's look at the questions now. Two fair coins are tossed simultaneously. Use a tree diagram to determine the probability of getting a head and a tail in any order and getting no heads. We start by drawing two branches to represent the first outcomes, where H is heads and T is tails. The first coin can come up heads with the probability of a half or tails with the probability of a half. Remember, the sum of the probabilities of the two branches must always add up to one. Because we are dealing with independent events, the second coin can also come up either heads or tails, irrespective of what the first coin landed on. So if the first coin came up heads, the next branches will represent the outcomes, heads with the probability of a half or tails with the probability of a half. And similarly, if the first coin came up tails, the next branches will represent the outcomes heads with the probability of a half or tails with the probability of a half. Our tree diagram now shows all possible outcomes of tossing two coins. We can now write all four outcomes from tossing two coins. The first outcome is heads on the first coin and heads on the second coin. The second outcome is heads on the first coin and tails on the second coin. Outcome three is tails on the first coin and heads on the second. And the fourth outcome is tails on the first coin and tails on the second coin. We can also write out the probabilities of each outcome since they are independent by multiplying along the branches. So the probability of getting two heads is a half times a half, which is one quarter. Similarly, we can work out the probability for each outcome is a quarter. Now to answer part A of the question, the probability of getting a head and a tail in any order will be the outcome's head tail or tail head, which is one quarter plus one quarter, which is a half. Part B, the probability of getting no heads is the outcome tail and tail. Therefore, the probability of no heads is equal to a quarter. We can easily extend this tree diagram to answer questions based on three or more tosses of coins. But as you can tell, this can become rather tedious when events have many outcomes. So make sure you read and understand the question well to see if it is necessary to draw the tree diagram. Now we will look at an example where the events are dependent. Tree diagrams are generally very useful for dealing with these types of events. Remember, for dependent events, the outcome of the first event does have an effect on the outcome of the second event. Our example involves a pack of playing cards. What is the probability when taking two cards at the same time from a regular pack of 52 playing cards of getting two jacks, no jacks, at least one jack. To answer this question, think of it as taking one card and then another without replacing the first card. The probability of drawing the second jack depends on whether a jack was taken out on the first draw. There are 52 cards in a pack and that means that there are 52 possible cards that can be picked. A tree diagram that plots all of these possibilities would be impossible to manage, so I'm going to show you a little trick. Let J be the event of getting a jack, and then J' prime will be its complement, not getting a jack on the draw. 
By doing this, I have reduced the outcomes we need to plot from 52 to 2. Now let's plot the tree diagram. There are 52 cards in total in a regular deck of cards, and there are 4 jacks in a deck. So if you took out a jack on the first draw, there would be only 3 left in the pack of remaining 51 cards. If the first card was not a jack, then there would still be 4 jacks left in the pack of 51 cards. It is important to keep this in mind as we draw the tree diagram. On the first draw, you can either get a jack or not. The probability of getting a jack is 4 out of 52, and the probability of not getting a jack is 48 out of 52, as there are 48 other cards besides the jacks. If you get a jack on the first draw, then there are only 3 left in the pack of 51 cards. So the probability of getting a jack on the second draw is 3 out of 51. The probability of not getting a jack on the second draw is 48 over 51. If you don't get a jack on the first draw, the probability of getting a jack on the second draw is 4 out of 51. And the probability of getting any other card is 47 out of 51. You can check the sum of probabilities on each pair of branches to make sure it's 1. Let's look at the first draw. The probability of a jack on the first draw plus the probability of not a jack on the first draw is 4 over 52 plus 48 over 52, which is 1. And you can check the rest of the probabilities in the same way. Now that we have drawn the tree and checked that the probabilities on each pair of branches adds up to 1, we can answer the questions. The first question asks us to find the probability of getting two jacks. This is only possible if we get a jack on the first draw and a jack on the second draw. Therefore, that will be 4 over 52 times 3 over 51, which is 0, 0,004. Remember when we go along the branches, we multiply the probabilities together. The second question asks us to find the probability of drawing no jacks. This will happen when no jack is drawn in the first or second draw. That is 48 over 52 times 47 over 51, which as a decimal is 0, 0,85. The last question asked us to find the probability of drawing at least one jack. That is equal to the probability of jack on the first draw and a jack on the second, plus the probability of jack on the first draw and no jack on the second, plus the probability of no jack on the first draw and a jack on the second. This gives us 0, 0,149. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Using Probability Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za. That will definitely jack up your grades. Goodbye.